I have never learned so much just from watching one single singer sing in concert. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what I learned from Juan Diego Flores. Number one, be a smart singer. Juan Diego Flores does not have a very big voice. Um, he is a leggero tenor, which is the very light category of the tenor voice, and which is kind of like my voice. <laughs> it's a little soft, but I can never compare it to him, of course. He is a very smart singer from what I observe. He uh, is able to control his voice in a very delicate way that he will not be buried by the orchestra. And of course, the conductor that he brought with him to Taiwan helped a lot in controlling the volume of the orchestra, but it was a full orchestra. When he feels like the texture of the orchestral accompaniment was getting thicker and thicker and louder and louder, he would take a step forward to kind of help the projection of his voice, to kind of uh, bring his voice more forward. And also, um, he is able to uh, maneuver between different phrases in his music. And he shows a lot of Rossini arias, uh, which is perfect for his voice. So there's not a lot of uh, brass sections. And he was able to really capture the audience by the projection of his voice. So what I learned from him is be a smart singer. Don't always sing full out all the time. Sometimes you have to come down a little bit. You don't have to always be so honking loud. Be a smart singer. Number two, do not push for volume. This is something that really shocked me about his performance that he did not sing like most opera singers, which is pushing for volume as loud as possible. He was very comfortable singing in a moderate to um, loud volume. At most, he would preserve about 5% of his voice when it comes to more of a forte section. Most of the time, he's not pushing for volume, which you can tell from the vocal color. It's not a very tight and rigid color. It's a very, um, I don't want to say soft, but sometimes soft. But it's a very sweet color coming out of his his voice. So the whole audience was just enamored by just the beauty of the voice. And I was in the National Concert Hall of Taiwan, which is one of the best uh, music hall in Asia that seats about 3,000 people. And I was sitting all the way back on the fourth floor, second to the last row. And I could hear him perfectly. And his beautiful voice is able to project uh, really, really far all the way to the back of the hall. And he was not amplified, I could tell you that, because he kind of, he spoke a little bit uh, in between songs. Um, he is able to contain his urge to push for volume, which is the, the biggest mistake or the biggest tendency that opera singers make. Number three, use different vocal colors. For an opera singer, there's not a lot of vocal colors that you can choose from traditionally. But I think Flores, his biggest contribution or his biggest innovation in singing is that he is using vocal colors that traditionally is not used by opera singers, like breathy tones, like soft tones. He's not a afraid to go soft, uh, which is an amazing, amazing vocal maneuver because it's very captivating and it draws the audience in. He sang about almost 20 songs plus, uh, plus encore, and you could hear him almost 100%. He ended the concert with Nelson Dorma without amplification. So throughout the whole concert, you could hear him perfectly. And I was sitting all the way in the back. So what I learned from him is you have to use different vocal colors to make your songs more interesting. And even in a phrase, if you're singing one phrase, be delicate with your with your interpretation. Um, how you sing each note, each phrase, each note. Um, you, you have choices of vocal colors. Number four, be patient with your vocal development. Oh my gosh, this concert in Taiwan was epic. Best classical singing concert that I've ever heard in my entire life. I have heard Placido Domingo, I have heard Jose Carrera's live, and I have to say, he already surpassed these senior tenors, and um, he is bringing classical singing to a new level. 
And I have heard a lot of people trashing his singing technique on the internet. Um, there's a lot of keyboard warriors on the internet, but I have to say, you have to hear someone live in order to uh, judge him correctly. And I heard him live finally, uh, this time in Taiwan. And I have to tell you, he is the real deal. And I've been following him ever since 20 years ago. And I have seen his development as a very soft and delicate light tenor to a heavier kind of sound in his 40s. He's 49 now. And he was very patient with his vocal development. He didn't rush into singing Verdi or Puccini, those bigger songs and arias. Um, the voice is so delicate. Um, it's, it's produced by two very delicate set of vocal folds or vocal cords. And they need time to develop even up to 20 years. He's reaping the, the good fruit out of it. I think he is the best tenor in the whole wild world right now. So that's what I learned from the world's number one tenor. This video is not scripted. I'm just sharing it while the memory is still kind of fresh in my memory. I heard him a couple days ago. So uh, I hope you benefited from this video, what I share, what I learned from Juan Diego Flores. And definitely, definitely take these to heart. If you are a singer, yes, be patient with your voice. And um, don't be afraid to be very, very expressive in your singing and in your songs. Until next time, I am Rex Wee. I'm a singer from Taipei, Taiwan. Stay tuned to my channel.